Well, welcome back. You're watching The Globe here on SABC News Channel. So we'll continue in just a moment our conversation with John the Boutlier, who is a United States congressman in New York, speaking to us about uh, the nomination to the Supreme Court of 51-year-old uh, Miss Ketanji Brown. And uh, looking at her track record, uh, let's see if we do have uh, John back on with us. Okay, so John, I was saying that, um, so this is what has been said, that she'll be, and you'll correct me if I'm wrong, the first Supreme Court nominee uh, that uh, has a public experience, uh, or rather the modern court's uh, uh, first judge who has experience as a public defender. And I was talking about how that came about. And that all had to do with the 2004 ruling in uh, the Guantanamo Bay prisoners case that they could find lawsuits in order to question and uh, challenge their indefinite detention there. Ketanji Brown Jackson was said to be a, a, an ideal candidate for this. Why do you think that was, even though, as was said then, it was a very complex legal issue? Right. Well, by the way, I think, yes, she might have been the first um, nominee to be in the Supreme Court who's a, what we call a public defender. But in fact, Thurgood Marshall, the first black man to be put on the Supreme mm -hmm. Court in the 1950s and 60s, was the chief lawyer for the NAACP okay. and went around the country representing black people who were unjustly accused of criminal conduct. So he kind of already did it. She's done it more in the offices of public defender, which we have, and doing it on behalf of a law firm. They're both use their legal education for a good thing, to defend people who need defense. How can anybody criticize them for that? Hmm. Uh, but uh, as I mentioned, she's had to deal with this. Obviously, A, a very uh, politicized matter, the issue of Guantanamo Bay, um, considered to be very divisive in American society as well, and those watching American foreign policy. She, I believe, even had to defend this, her record when she was interviewed for other, uh, and I'm going to get it in just a moment, which uh, a seat she the was uh, contesting. Appeals court. Yeah. D.C. appeals court. Right. That why she defending terrorists. Talk us through about that and whether this could be something that could come up again. Well, it probably will come up, but it was only last year that she was nominated by President Biden for an open seat on the D.C. Court of Appeals, which is one level under the Supreme Court. So she's already been confirmed by this current U.S. Senate with, I believe, three Republican senators voting for her. And that issue came up in those hearings, will come up in a month or so when they have hearings here. I don't think it'll be a big problem for her. And she can defend herself very well as, as a good lawyer. She did her job hmm. overseeing um, those cases, and I don't think she'll ultimately pay a penalty for it. Okay. So you mentioned um, who she's replacing, Justice S. Stephen G. Breyer. I believe that after graduating from Harvard that she clerked for several uh, judges, including him. What kind of a position does that put her in? And would they have continued uh, 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 some sort of relationship for her to glean knowledge of where she's going, the kind of dynamics she'd have to deal with? Well, I think most clerks stay in touch with the federal judge they clerk for. Now, that was a while ago. She's gone on and had, what, eight years as a district, federal district court judge, and he, almost a year as a appeals court judge, all after she worked for Justice Breyer. I'm sure she has socially stayed in touch but I believe they don't really discuss. I'm sure I know that Supreme mm. Court justices do not discuss cases even years after with their clerks. They just leave it alone. It's very secret stuff. Okay. Her experience at uh, the United States Sentencing Commission, what would it help her bring to the Supreme Court? Well, I think a lot because 
the court does not have as many. They have nine lawyers as justices. They're always lawyers now. You don't have to be a lawyer to be in the Supreme Court, but it's become almost automatic. And most of them have never dealt with the sentencing aspect. They haven't run a trial and sentenced a defendant. She has. A couple of the more recent ones have. And it, it, it's part of the system is understanding what a judge, what range of penalties he or she can impose and maybe push to have it changed. Too. What I find interesting is this. It's been said that she has very deep roots in the thinking about criminal law from multiple perspectives. One, that her uncle was sentenced to life in prison on cocaine charges. That another, um, uh, I, I think one of her other relatives so, or another Miami chief of police, a third uncle was a sex crimes detective as well. Her brother worked as a police officer in Baltimore uh, before he took a job as an investigator at the same federal public defender's office where she had mostly handled appeals. How does this set you up, as it were, for what you would have to do at the Supreme Court? And if you could just educate us, because uh, other than not being in judicial circles or the legal fraternity, it's a whole different country uh, for most of us. So we'd like to understand how your systems work. <laughs> well, OK, she doesn't run. If she makes it on the Supreme Court, she's going to be one of nine justices. Mm -hmm. No one of them runs a courthouse or a trial where they're going to do any particular sentencing or anything. But her background, through the way you just described it, through her brother, her uncle, and the other relatives, she is steeped in knowledge of the criminal justice system. And those cases do make their way often to the Supreme Court. And she's going to be one person in the room with the other eight justices when they debate what to do, who can bring on the ground knowledge into that room and i and that can only be helpful in the long run all right thank you so much for, for uh, speaking to us john john labutia who is a former u.s congressman and um, let's uh, take a look now at the soccer a lot of you no doubt what